So this video is more of an experiment than a review because I've been curious about this for quite a while and I do get some emails about can I use 12 or 16 megapixels to convert my negatives into a digital file? Is that good enough or do I need a higher megapixel camera? Now, I've always used the higher megapixel cameras because that's what I've had on hand, the 45 megapixel um, Canon R5 and the Sony, no, Panasonic, sorry, Panasonic S1R, which I think was 47 megapixels. They've done a great job. But I've always wondered, is that too much? Um, is it too much resolution for the negative? Am I wasting my time? Will 24 or 12 megapixels be good enough? So what I've done, I've put together a plan to do this. Hopefully this works, because I haven't done it yet. I've never done this test. You've got the A7S Mark II, which is 12 megapixels. Quite an old camera, but still a really good camera. You've got the current A7SC, which is their budget full-frame camera, basically, um, in a rangefinder style. This is 24 megapixels, full-frame again. And then you have the brand new Sony Alpha 1 or A1, which is an absolutely outstanding camera for a digital camera. But this is 50 megapixels. So as we go up from camera to camera, they're going to double in megapixels. So you have the 12 megapixel full frame, 24 and 50 megapixels. Okay, 50 megapixels is a little bit more than double, but it's basically double. I want to put these three cameras up against each other in converting negatives into a digital file. Now the lens I'm going to be using on all three cameras is the Sony 90mm macro lens f2.8. Now I will shoot this around about 5.6 because that's what I normally shoot with all of my conversion of negatives into digital file. I do find it gives me the best sharpness and it gives me a little bit of depth in the negative because obviously you're shooting macro, you're going to lose a lot of the depth because it's a close-up lens. Now I'm going to use some color negatives and some black and white negatives. 645 from the Mamiya and some 35mm black and white and color from my Leica cameras. And we're going to see how the megapixels affects the resolution of the negative. Is there a maximum megapixels you can use? Because once you go above those megapixels, do you get any more benefits? I'm guessing 24 megapixels. I think that's going to be the sweet spot of a full frame sensor, getting the maximum you can out of a negative. I think going to 50 megapixels is going to be too much. I could be wrong, but I haven't done this before. So if any of you guys think you know what it's going to be before you watch the rest of this video, put a comment down below. 12, 24 or 50 megapixels, which is the threshold for converting a negative into a digital file. And the other part I'm curious about is the grain. Will more megapixels enhance the grain of the negative? I don't know, I could be completely way off somewhere there, but it's always been a little bit of a worry of mine. If I'm using more megapixels, will it bring the grain out more in the negative? I normally shoot ISO or ASA 160, 400 film, or even 100 film actually, at cross. 100, 100, 160 and 400. I go up to 800 sometimes with cine still, I very rarely shoot above that, but I have shot some P3200 Kodak film while I was in Taiwan, which was a long time ago. It's over a year ago. Wow, it's been that long. So I do have some negatives from black and white P3200 film. Now, I will also do a test with each of these cameras with the 90mm macro lens and to see if more megapixels actually brings out more of the grain, enhances the grain. Does it make the negative lose its substance of a negative, basically? That's the whole plan of this video. I'm hoping this is gonna work because I've never tried this before. Now the system I'm gonna be using is the Kaiser system. This is basically my new setup for converting my negatives into a digital file. You'll see a little bit of the Kaiser system in this video. And then in about a week or two's time, I'm gonna do a full review on the Kaiser system because I have the complete setup and how my system has changed over the last two years. Because it was nearly two years ago, I did my video on converting negatives into a digital file using a mirrorless camera. My system has changed quite a lot. So that video will be coming in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that video. But this video is basically about converting your negatives into a digital file for editing and printing. And what megapixels is the best for doing that? Is it 12, 24 or 50? So let's go over to the Kaiser system now. Let's basically take some raw photos and then we'll put them in the computer and then we'll talk about the actual negatives. I'll show you some samples. And then after all of that, you can head down to the bottom in the description and you can download those files for yourself, the raw files and the edited files using Negative Lab Pro. They will be in a Dropbox folder. The link to that Dropbox folder will be down below in the description.
Now, before we look at the side-by-side -side comparisons of all three cameras, what I want to do is quickly show you Negative Lab Pro. Now, this is the plugin I use for Lightroom. It allows me to convert the raw file, which is a negative, because it's a photo of a negative, and turn it into a positive. Now, Negative Lab Pro has a lot of different adjustments for color and black and white. But for this video, I'm just going to keep all the settings exactly the same. So you can see how each different camera renders the negative, basically, and also the resolution. I don't want to play around too much with the actual software. So let's do a quick demo of Negative Lab Pro, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. If you want to find out more about Negative Lab Pro, a link to the website will be down below in the description. And there's also a free trial as well, so you can test it for yourselves. So let's head over to the computer now, and let's do a quick demo of Negative Lab Pro, and then we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons of all three cameras. Now I've been using Negative Lab Pro for about two years now and I've been really happy with the results I've been getting from this plugin for Lightroom. It's very, very easy to use. You click Control N on a Mac and this window will pop up. You've got different color models. You can go all different types of scanners and there's also black and white. We're gonna keep it on basic for this video. I don't wanna to go too much into the settings. You click Convert. And then this window will pop up and you can make all of these fine adjustments. We're not going to do any of that in this video. Like I said, we're going to keep all of the negatives exactly the same. You click apply and it's as easy as that. You get a really nice result from this. Let's start with some medium format images. These are captured with the Mamiya 645 um, in black and white. I can't remember exactly what the film is, but probably would have been around about 400 speed film. Now the one on the left was captured with a 12 megapixel camera. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, you zoom in. It's not until you compare it to the 24 megapixel image that you can see the difference. Now, the actual 24 megapixel has captured so much more detail from that negative. You can actually see how many teeth are on the rear sprocket of this motorbike. You can just make them out on the 12 megapixel. That is the difference. And I have to admit the difference was a lot more than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting the 24 megapixel to capture that much more information from the negative. These are images of a 35 mil negative. And the one on the left is a 12 megapixel sensor. The one on the right is a 24 megapixel sensor. Now, as we zoom into both the images, you can see there's hardly any difference between the 12 megapixel and the 24 megapixel. They both look great. There's a lot of details been captured. So I would say 12 megapixels is definitely fine for 35 mil negatives. As we saw previously, it's not very good for medium format. So we've covered that part now. I'm going to move over to 24 megapixels versus 50 megapixels. The left image is from the 50 megapixel sensor and the right image is from the 24 megapixel sensor. As we zoom in 200%, you'll actually see that the 50 megapixel has captured a tiny little bit more information, but it's marginal. I, I really wouldn't notice it if I was going to print these images. There doesn't seem to be a point to shoot with that much higher resolution than the 24 megapixel. The 24 megapixel has done a really, really good job. The chain here looks a little bit sharper and obviously the 44, I think it's a 44 tooth, looks sharper as well, but it is very, very marginal. Now we switch over to some colored film. Now the one on the left is the 50 megapixel, the one on the right is the 24 megapixel. So the 24 megapixel image has been zoomed in 329%. The 50 megapixel image has been zoomed in 211%. And you can see there's no more detail being captured in that kickstart. This is a 645 negative. The carburetor looks exactly the same, no more information. Even the filter on the outside, you can see no more information captured there. They look identical to each other, to be truthful. Let's zoom back out. So the 50 megapixel is not capturing any more information from the negative. Now these are 645 negatives. So something I do want to talk about is the grain. Now I'm going to bring up an image that I shot in Taiwan, well, about a year and a half ago with this guy here, Robin. He's going to hate me for this photograph. But anyway, most of you will know Robin as the real Sir Robin on YouTube. If you don't know who he is, check out his channel. I'll put a link to it down below. An amazing street photographer. But I want to talk about these two images. Now, the one on the left is the 50 megapixel image. The one on the right is the 24 megapixel image. Now, these were shot with Kodak P3200 film, which is an ISO 3200 film. Quite noisy, but still a really nice film to use. Now, as I zoom in 100% on this image, you can see the noise is taking on this horrible look. It's really defined and it stands out a lot. It looks almost digital. When you click over to the 24 megapixel, this is a 35 mil negative, by the way. 
you'll actually see the noise has a nice organic look. So if you're shooting high ISO film, I definitely would stay away from a high megapixel camera to convert your negatives. As you can see, the 24 megapixel is way more pleasing to look at than the actual 50 megapixel. This grain just looks awful. So to sum up this experiment, 12 megapixels is perfectly fine for 35 mil negatives. Not so good for medium format. 24 megapixels is really good for 35 mil negatives and really good for 645 medium format negatives. It captures a lot more detail than the 12 megapixel sensor. I've actually taken those photos multiple times because I felt the 12 megapixel photo was slightly out of focus and it wasn't. It's exactly the same result every single time. So the 24 megapixels is capturing a lot more detail in those negatives. Now, when you move up to 50 megapixels, it's not capturing anything more, especially in the 645 negatives and the 35 mil. There's no more information for it to capture, so it's not capturing any more. If there is anything, it's very marginal. So I just wouldn't waste my time with a high megapixel camera if I'm converting medium format negatives. The downside to a high megapixel camera is it's defining the grain more. It's bringing more of the grain out. It makes the grain look really digital, and it's not a pleasant look. So if you're shooting a lot of high ISO film, especially something like the Kodak P3200 or Delta 3200, I would stay away from a high megapixel camera. 24 megapixels is really good, or even the 12 megapixels actually looked really nice. Um, it didn't define the grain as much as the 24, but I think you can get away with the 24 megapixel. That's it for this video, and I really hope it's helped some of you guys. Over the last couple of years, so many of you have reached out to me and asked me about megapixels and what's the best megapixels on the camera to convert negatives. So this experiment was done for that reason. Um, and obviously it's on YouTube, so it's gonna be for future generations as well. So you don't have to worry about different megapixels and if you can get away with a 12, 24, or 50 megapixel camera. Now, all of the files in this video, the photos basically, are in a Dropbox folder. And the link to that Dropbox folder is down below in the description. So you can download them for yourself and check them out for yourselves as well. Um, and don't forget to check out Negative Lab Pro. It's a really easy software to use and it's a great plugin for Lightroom. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching.